Joining us today, courtesy of Vivid Seats, LA Kings goaltender Cam Talbot. How are you doing today, Cam? I'm doing well, thank you. And featuring Zach Dooley. How are you doing today, Zach? Just, I'm doing great. All right, first question. Uh, when does Cameron become Cam? Jeez, uh, that's a good question. I think around the time I started playing juniors, they just cut out the second half of my name and started calling me Cam. Were you a Cameron growing up? I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. By, and, by and mostly or... school. Yeah. yeah, my mom was very adamant that everyone called me Cameron. Growing up, I even had there was a point where I'd won some sort of award in minor hockey, and they put Cam on the trophy, and she sent it back and made them put my full name. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Is are you still Cameron if you're in trouble? Most of the time, yeah. yeah. At home, I'm Cameron a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tabs, I want to look at at your career, and you have a path that. Is different than a lot of people, right? You look at the school that you went to, not a lot of guys have kind of come out of there. When you look at the way that your career has gone, did you envision things going the way that they did for you maybe when you were, you know, at Alabama Huntsville? Absolutely not. No. Until the last, I'd say, month of the season, I didn't even have an agent. Uh, my final year in college there, uh, my coach sat me down, called me into his office, thought I was in trouble, hand me a like a list of six names with some phone numbers and was like, do you got an agent yet? I said, no, never needed one. <laughs> and he's like, well, these, these guys have called, let me know if you need, uh, need a hand, like giving them a shout and uh, kind of interviewing them and deciding on picking one. And yeah, it, it all just kind of happened so fast and it kind of just, um, took on a life of its own after that. And I just, I still can't believe that I'm here. I still have those, those pinch me moments and stuff like that. So, um, if you asked me 15 years ago when I was leaving college, if I'd be uh, grinding away in the NHL at 36, I would have told you you were, uh, you were uh, toying with me there. I, I still can't believe it. Did he call you in as Cameron? That's why you thought you were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like we're glossing over it. I want to hammer it home real hard to make sure everybody understands. Alabama, Alabama, USA. There's no mm -hmm. small town in Ontario called Alabama. Like, no, what is hockey not. like in Huntsville, Alabama? Better than you would have thought. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were, uh, I mean, we didn't have the best record most days or most years, but we were fairly competitive. And uh, when my last year, we ended up making the NCAA tournament as well. We won our conference and uh, gave the number one seed in the country a, a run for their money in the Sweet 16. I think we lost that game uh, two to one. So it wasn't uh, for lack of effort. We just, uh, you know, we didn't, you don't always get the best recruits in Alabama. Let's put it that way. So, um, most of the time we were getting like guys that are kind of phasing out of junior and, and, uh, you get the, the old 20, 21 year old freshmen. So we were a lot older than most teams, but uh, a lot of experience. That's for sure. <laughs> How did they convince you to go to Huntsville, Alabama? Um, it was my third year of junior and, uh, I come from small town, hardworking family. Uh, they offered me a full scholarship and that's, that's tough to turn down when you're, uh, you know, I was already working at the steel mill that my dad was working at in summers just to help pay for, uh, my college tuition, uh, back in Ontario. So when that opportunity comes along, it's, it's tough to say no to. How many similarities are there to steel mill town in Southern Ontario and Huntsville, Alabama? Not a whole lot. No. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hardworking people down in Huntsville as well. Um, but yeah, definitely not a ton of similarities. There's two main paths when you're that age, right? It's major, junior, or NCAA. Did you always know you wanted to go NCAA if you had the opportunity? Honestly, I would have played anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't ever drafted to the, to the OHL either, so I didn't really have that opportunity. It was never, uh, you know, never in the cards for me. So when uh, NCAA came calling, I mean, that was, you know, the, the only opportunity at that time. And um, But for me, um, and, my, and uh, my parents always hammered in, um, you know, uh, academics and stuff like that. So, um, growing up wasn't always the, the best student, but I got by. And then when I got to Alabama, I really, uh, realized like what it took and what it meant. And I ended up making a, a couple of all academic teams and stuff like that. So, um, started to, to grind it out there and cause I thought I was going to have to use that diploma at some point. So, uh, I haven't had to use it yet. Uh, fortunate, uh, very fortunately. So, um, still just, uh, yeah, it was a, a whirlwind opportunity that I just took full advantage of. I swear this entire conversation will not be only about <laughs> Alabama, but before we move on, um, fried green tomatoes, pulled pork, pecan pie, white barbecue sauce, any of those things, uh, you fall in love with while you're down there and still need today, or is it just a part of a chapter of the life that's 
it's done. Yeah, no, just chapter life. All I'm right. not a very adventurous <laughs> eater, so right. uh, I didn't try. I did try alligator once. Kind of tasted like chicken. So that's the that's about as adventurous as I got down there. So I was looking up your stats real quick, and I'm curious if you know the answer to this. Among active goaltenders, do you know where you rank in career save percentage? I do not. You are tenth. Not bad. That's pretty. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> I would bad. say it's a lot of active goaltenders. That's yeah, good. that's yeah. right. Yeah. I had no idea. No. So when you say earlier that you would have played anywhere, and you you have pinch pinch me moments where you realize you're still playing at this point in your career, what do you attribute that longevity to? Passion, hard work, dedication, and probably a little bit of the chip on my shoulder. You know, when you're passed over and. Uh, every draft growing up, I mean, there's always those moments where you just want to prove people wrong. And that's what I've been trying to do year after year in this league. And, um, yeah, just, I saw how hard that my, my family worked growing up and I just took that work ethic, put it into my game and, uh, just continue to come to the rink every day and, and put in the work that, that, uh, continues to let me play at a high level. Heard very similar things from Blake Lazat or Matt Roy, guys who are undrafted late ground picks. Do you kind of have maybe like an unspoken bond with those guys? You all have similar versions of a story that you've earned and you've gotten here off of what you have you know, put into it. Absolutely. I mean, there's always that mutual respect from guys that, you know, went that, that college route and worked their way up the ranks through the minors and stuff like that. So um, there's always, yeah, that unspoken bond or mutual respect kind of thing. And um, But, you know, it's not to say that uh, – you know, the other guys didn't work for it as well. It's just, you know, maybe they were just, you know, a little bit better than us growing up or something like that and, and got the uh, got the opportunity to be drafted. But, um, yeah, I mean, we all got here at some point. It's just a different path. Is there a message that, that L.A. Kings can tell that would send 16-year-old, 18-year-old, 20-year-old Cam Talbot? Dream big. That's all. Yeah. That's uh, the biggest thing that I tell my kids too. Just you can be anything you want to be as long as you uh, put your mind to it, and that's uh, I'm living proof of that at this point. Are your kids old enough to have given any sense of what they want to be? Well, my son wants to be a hockey player. Okay. He's already he's already <laughs> goalie determined or that. Forward? No, my wife said she can't live through another goalie, so she put a, <laughs> she she put a stop to that pretty quick. He tried goalie once last year in in Ottawa, and uh, she wouldn't let him put the pads on again. So. Uh, so he, he got over it, and now he likes to play forward, so we're, we're all good there. How special is it for you now that you can share that type of experience with your son? Because I'm sure there was a point when he didn't know, so to be kind of still playing and to have him be able to remember it and aspire for the same thing, how cool is that? Yeah, I have that conversation a lot with my wife, actually. I always said I wanted to play long enough where they'd actually remember and appreciate kind of how cool it is to see what dad does and um, you know, a couple months ago, uh, or last month, I guess at the All-Star Game is one of those um, one of those pinch me moments for me and cool to be able to, to share it with uh, my son and my daughter, actually. So um, it was one of those things, you know, they're seven years old now, they're going to remember that kind of stuff. So to see them walk around the room and kind of be starstruck a little bit and, and get all those autographs and stuff like that was, uh, you know, fun for me to be a part of, but fun to see as a dad as well. You've talked about that All-Star Weekend, you know, a number of times now. Was, was that the most special moment for you, just the, the family element of it, knowing it's not a competitive game, right, but you do get to have those kinds of moments lighter-hearted? Absolutely, yeah. To, like I said, see their faces going around the room and going up to guys asking for autographs and, you know, getting to come out of their shell a little bit. They're shy at first, and then once the guys kind of come around and how good everyone is with the kids in the room and, and stuff like that, they just started to have such a great time, and <clears throat> it just takes on the, a life of its own. And at some point, it's like I wasn't even in the room. They just kept going around, and, and to see that as a as a parent um, is pretty special, and to have it in my, you know, close to my hometown to share it with family and stuff like that too was, uh, you know, extremely special for us, especially at this point in my career. Are there any other pinch me moments that leap out to your mind in your tenure as an LA King? Um, I'd say that one, like the All-Star Game is probably, you know, one of the, the top things. But, uh, you know, just honestly coming here, um, walking outside every day, being able to go to the beach. I mean, those are kind of pinch me moments every, every day. If you look at where I've been throughout my career, I mean, New York was beautiful and uh, but still cold that I think I hit every cold climate on the way <laughs> until I got here. So uh, those pinch me moments are kind of nice too. you walk outside and it's like, you know, how do I live here? It's like I finally made the real NHL. <laughs> 
We've got uh, a bunch of questions submitted from fans. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and work a couple of them in here real quick. Um, one came up in my conversation with Eric Portillo. Um, I explained to him that I still have <coughs> nightmares about jobs that I haven't worked in a very long time. High pressure jobs. And I still will sometimes wake up in a, in a panic. Like, mm -hmm. oh no, I'm late. I've forgotten to do something. A goaltender, I can't imagine a more high pressure job. Do you ever have stress dreams or panic dreams about goaltending oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's kind of hard not to and sometimes i'll just wake up and or like i'll jolt myself awake and i'll be having like a hockey dream or whatever and it's like a puck's coming at me and all of a sudden i just jolt and wake up and i end up waking up my wife too and then she's mad at me so um yeah there's definitely those those moments where you're actually having stress related dreams about you know something that's going on whether it been in past game or I don't even know subconsciously you're just always thinking about it because it's always at the forefront of your mind. Those are Cameron moments, right? Those are oh, not yeah. Cameron. Yeah, those yeah. are Cameron yells for sure. Do you have a favorite <clears throat> shutout in your career? My first NHL shutout. Um, I was a big Montreal fan growing up, huge Patrick Waugh guy, uh, and my first shutout was at the Bell Center, uh, one nothing game against uh, Carey Price at the other end. So that was. Uh, pretty special game for me I grew up you know watching Carey Price play throughout the the world juniors and obviously he was in the the league probably f seven or eight years before I was so I, I watched him a lot looked up to him even though we're the same age which is kind of crazy um so to to get my first shout out at the Bell Center uh with you know 33 hanging in the rafters and the guy at the other end that was a a pretty special one for me you have a ton of well-timed shutouts throughout your career. College, you had one in that college tournament that we went to NCAAs. I think your first AHL playoff game was a shutout. Your second and third NHL playoff games were a shutout. Had a few in the World Championships, winning a gold team Canada. Like, do you just dial in or try to really get up for those kinds of moments and maybe deliver some of your best performances in those moments? I mean, <clears throat> that's what you dream about as a kid, right? Making the, the big stops when the game's on the line. Um, and there's no one better at that, I think, than, than Patrick Waugh. That's one of the reasons why I idolized him. He always seemed to have, you know, the big game when the game was, when the game was on the line and the team needed him. So, um, you know, as a goaltender, you want to be that guy that guys can rely on in the big, big moments. And as you said, throughout my career, I've had some of those moments. Uh, luckily, I guess you could say, maybe not luckily. I, um, but it's been, uh, yeah, you can definitely hang my head on, on some of those, uh, some of those big shout outs and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to, to get those wins in the moments for the guys and, and, uh, you know, just be a part of something special. There's an ever evolving battle between <laughs> goaltenders and skaters. The equipment improves, then your equipment improves, your technique improves, their technique improves. Sticks have gotten <laughs> lighter, uh, bendier. Players can hide the release point now. So what is, at this point in 2024, what's the toughest shot for a goalie at this point? It's probably not a slap shot anymore. Is it that move that Austin Matthews has perfected where he pulls it into his body and shoots it? Is it a snapshot? Is it a one-timer? What's the toughest one to stop? That's a loaded question because I feel like because they can release it from so many different angles now, right. they can pull and release, they can shoot it from out in front of them where you think they're just stick handling it and it snaps right off their stick and it's still 85 miles an hour. They don't even have to pull it back anymore. Like they just use the stick. So there's so many different ways that you can shoot a puck now that I think that's what makes it so difficult on goaltenders is because you really don't know when the release is coming. The players are so good at hiding every single shot now that, like you said, a, a slap shot from the point or from the top of the circle is not the toughest one to read anymore. It's when, you know, you think that they're still stick handling and boom, it's off their tape and it's and it's coming at you quick. So um, I think, the yeah, the toughest thing now is not one shot, I'd say. It's the fact that all those shots have the same velocity and they can release them from anywhere now. So is it has it gotten harder over the course of your career to be a goaltender in the NHL? Um, I think so, or I'm just getting older, one or the other, but <laughs> it um, <laughs> could be both a combination, but I, I'd say, I just think that the speed of the game has definitely gotten a lot, a lot faster. There's so much more pace to it. Um, you know, there's the fourth line guys can, can put the puck in the net just as, as well as the top line guys. So, um, there's no, there's no easy nights. There's no easy lines out there. And, um, at this point, you have to, as a goaltender, just trust your reads, rely on your, 
uh, your teammates around you and, and hope that your reads are right because the, the game gets uh, pretty quick out there. And if you fall behind, it's in the back of the net pretty fast. Jesse talked about kind of the evolution of like equipment, whether that's for goalies or skaters. Do you have any like piece of equipment that you've never changed? Like my bag currently, I have the same elbow pads that I wore when I was like 10 because I have dainty elbows. It's fine. But do you have like anything that you've just kept and continued because you just like how it works for you? No, not really um, at this point. I mean, they've also like shrunk our gear to give the guys more room to shoot at and stuff like that. So, I mean, at that point, most of the gear is pretty much you've had to switch it out at some point. Um, yeah, the only thing that I really hate switching for me are skates. I hate breaking into skates. Tried today, almost broke my ankles. So, um, yeah, I've had the skates that I wear right now since I was in Minnesota. I think they said they were on the uh, – Grange said that they came from Minnesota on the box. So uh, I've had those for a good two, two and a half years now, and uh, I'll just have him keep uh, keep repairing them anytime that they break. I rip the eyelids out because I tie them so tight, and he just has to keep putting new ones in, and until he can't anymore, I'm going to continue to use those skates. But that's pretty much like the the only thing that I would say that I really hate changing. Otherwise, I'm pretty easy going, and uh, I'll try anything new. So with the importance of equipment, the – increasing difficulty of the game how important is the relationship between a goalie and his goalie coach it's huge um and i've been lucky to have a lot of a lot of great coaches mentors um you know friends really and um you know that's no different with bucks um it's been a pretty seamless transition to come here and, and work with him and we're just always seem to be on the same page um He'll say something, and I've already kind of got an idea of what he's going to tell me. And um, I think that comes from, you know, being around so long, I can pretty much critique my own game at this point. But, um, you know, it's still always nice to throw ideas back and forth on, you know, what could we have done differently here in certain situ- certain situations and, <clears throat> and uh, vice versa. So we'll bounce ideas back and forth off of each other, and it's just uh, – um, yeah, I've been lucky to work with a lot of a lot of great coaches and goalie coaches. So um, Bucks is definitely up there. We've talked a little bit about like, <clears throat> different styles that different coaches have. Like, how much is that relationship driven by the coach's style versus a specific goalie style? Because I'm sure everyone has a little bit different approach and needs maybe a little bit different of an approach. I'd say the biggest thing or the biggest change for me came when I left college and I worked with uh, Ben Waller in New York. I used to play three or four feet outside the top of my crease. I've played more like Jonathan Quick than Henrik Lundqvist at that point. So he kind of had to like reel me back and um, he really changed um, the way that I played. And I don't think um, the way I played in college would have been sustainable in the NHL. So I always give Benoit Lair um, a ton of credit. I don't think I would have ever made the NHL had he not changed my, um, my style or philosophy as I approached the game. Um, but after that, um, you get to a point where you're comfortable and confident where you're playing. And I feel like every goalie coach I've been with since then, they're not so much trying to change you or mold you any differently because at that point you're already established and stuff like that. It's more just tweaks here and there. And um, my goalie coach and I back home, um, we call it just adding another tool to your toolbox. I mean, every guy's got a, a – different philosophy or scenario that you can maybe change it up and maybe use a different save selection. And uh, so I just try to, you know, take what I've already got as a, as a baseline and just keep adding and adding and, uh, you know, gotten to the point where you, you, you've added, added a lot and then your body goes on you. You got to figure out a way to, <laughs> to, to make saves in a different way. So um, there's always that, uh, that evolution of goaltending. And when you've been around for so long, it just keeps evolving. I want to talk a little bit about this season before we let you go. And we'll let you go soon, I promise. Um, after the Vancouver game, Jim Hiller said that he thought it was your best of the season. Uh, I think I have that right. Vancouver home game. Yes, Vancouver home game. Yeah, sorry. Um, would you evaluate that game the same way? Um, I mean, I felt like I played well, but, you know, any time that you don't come out with the victory is tough to – to classify it as the best game of the season. So I, I don't know if I would put it that way. But, uh, you know, I felt that I, I played a pretty solid game. But uh, ultimately, when you don't make the, the last save, then you're always looking back at what could I have done better. We're at a point now where the priorities, as outlined by the coaching staff in the front office, is wins and losses. And we've heard a lot of talk about it's important that the LA Kings focus on playing their game and worry less about compensating for the opponent. 
But it sounds like everything you said about the position of goalie, it sounds like that's sort of <laughs> got to be the goalie's mindset all the time, right? You've got your own circumstances to worry about. Yeah, and I think that's kind of where I got away from my game a little bit there in, in January. I was trying to do too much, trying to play this guy and that guy in the back of my head instead of trusting that that guy was taken care of by our structure and by our D-man or forward, whoever's coming back. So um, for me, it's, you know, again, making the, the proper read and just trusting everyone else in front of me is, is going to do their job. And I think that's when our team is at their best, when, you know, when there's a breakdown, you know, there's guys that are going to be there to help you out and uh, solidify, you know, the, the middle of the ice. And when a guy gets beat, there's always that secondary layer. And I think that's when we're, when we're at our best, we're five guys, cohesive unit, and we're tough to beat when you're coming through the neutral zone or trying to beat us in D zone coverage because everyone's out there helping each other out. Everyone knows where everyone's going to be. And when we're on our game, uh, we're, we're a tough team to handle. I've only got one more. Duels, you want to? I'm good. All right. You've got uh, Anchorman on your helmet. Have you met Will Farrell yet? I have not. No. All right. Well, the next time we talk to you, I want I want you to have met Will Farrell. There is a new uh, helmet coming soon that's oh. going to have a Ooh. few more characters on it. Ooh. So not, Okay. Yeah. So hopefully he'll... All the Kingsman exclusive. Yeah. yeah. So um, that one is coming. It's in the works. Dave's painting it as we speak. So, um, but it's got, uh, this one was predominantly all Anchorman. There's going to be a few more characters on the next one. Well, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the update and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys.